Welcome to Albany, New York, which is the capital of the great state of New York, the Empire State. Today is the 19th of March, 2018. I moved to this house, the house behind me, almost exactly six months ago. The residential neighborhood where we're standing right now is called North Washington because it's north of Washington Avenue, which is that away. My name is Art Dudley. Welcome to my new house. When I lived in Cherry Valley, New York, we had some of the best AC power I've ever heard. It was noiseless. Not a single power treatment product I ever tried made much of a difference because the power was that good. Here in Albany, the power is not quite so good. It's a little bit noisy, so I've had to do some things to take care of it. Other than that, I really love Albany, and this is the best neighborhood I've ever lived in, with probably the best neighbors I've ever had. I'm very happy here. Music sounds good. This is my dog, Chatter. The last time Jana came by to film, Chatter was being too naughty, so she couldn't be anywhere near where we were. But she's behaving reasonably well today. She likes this house, although she thinks the dog next door is public enemy number one. She's a good listening companion. Hmm. Well, about 10 years ago, my wife and daughter and I were on vacation on Martha's Vineyard, an island off the coast of Massachusetts. And there's a really great used bookstore on Martha's Vineyard that we go to every time we visit. And we were there, we pick a rainy day, you know, we're not gonna to go to the beach, so we look at used books. And there, I found this poster. Now, as a kid who owned a lot of rock posters, you know, I had the Beatles and the Stones and Crosby, Stills and Nash and everybody on my bedroom wall. Here is a poster for classical music enthusiasts. And I really love Berg. I especially like the Berg Violin Concerto and the opera Lulu, so I had to have it. So I bought that. It sat in a closet for years and years. We just you know, brought it home on the ferry, uh, drove it home, put it in a closet, and didn't think about it until just a few months ago, when I was, well, about seven months ago, when I was preparing to move to Albany. I said, I gotta have that framed. So I took it to a frame shop, and the guy unrolled it and laid it out, and he said, yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's a picture of Alban Berg, and he's posing with a painting of himself that was done by his, one of his mentors, Arnold Schoenberg, the composer. Arnold Schoenberg was also a fairly gifted painter. So it's sort of a funny shot, Berg looking out the window of his apartment with this you know, life-size painting of him. It's pretty cool. And so I'm in the framing shop, the guy unrolls it, and he says, uh, what do you want me to do up the autograph on the back? And I said, the autograph on the back, what are you talking about? You know, it, the photo was taken in 1932 and Berg died not too much longer after that, but there was a signature on the back. So we looked at it, it turned out to be the signature of Arnold Schoenberg's daughter, Nuria, Nuria Schoenberg, uh, and she signed this poster, God only knows why, in 1986. It's signed and dated. So. It hasn't been obliterated. It was mounted in such a way that it still exists. And I took a picture of it and it's, it's way cool. It's a conversation piece. I don't know why I put it up next to the bathroom door, but there you go. Oh no, it's me again, Herb Riker. It is Herb Riker. Hello, Herb. Hello. Thanks for dropping by. I looked and there you were. There I was. I didn't expect that. Well, this is the first day Herb Riker and Jenna Dagdagan have come to visit me in my new home here in Albany. This home, my home, this record closet in my record closet. The dog is someplace else. So in a but few we minutes. Love the dog. Oh, we love the dog. Yeah, very much. You used to be a dog. So, I always. So like you've the, told me. No. I was a dog. Yep. Yeah. Well, I aspire to be a dog someday. But right now, we're going to show you the few things that have changed in my system since I moved here six months ago, and uh, we'll point out a few other things of interest here in this uh, old house that dates from 1936. That's not that old. Just about as old as a 6L6. 6L6, yeah. 1930s. All right, thanks for dropping by. So this is my new living room. My new living room in my new old house. And my living room is my listening room. It's kind of the way I've always wanted it. And it's uh, working out really well here. It's a somewhat different size from my old room. It's probably about the same volume, but it's proportioned differently. Instead of 12 feet wide, it's 11 feet wide. 
but instead of an eight foot ceiling, it's a nine foot ceiling. It's plaster and lath, and uh, it, it, needs, it needs new paint. I really despise the color that this room is right now. So uh, write in with your suggestions, but I think I'm gonna go with a sort of a sand color. And I'm sitting in my old stickly chair, trying not to do the Richard Pearl pose, and I'm straddled by or uh, flanked by a pair of DeVore O93 loudspeakers. My Altec Flamencos just kind of weren't making it in this room. They were too big, too physically big. I couldn't open the windows behind them. So um, I've borrowed a pair of O93s. It's a very high sensitivity, high efficiency loudspeaker. Uh, not only does it have high electrical sensitivity, but it's got a really high benign impedance curve. I don't think it ever drops below eight and I think it's 10 ohms on average, so they're really drivable, and they're just loving this room. I'm loving these speakers in this room, and I think the room is loving these speakers in this room. So, and right now I'm using them, I'm switching back and forth between two models of speaker cable. Uh, my old standby Auditorium 23, doesn't have a model name, that's just their only speaker cable model, and uh, a set of cables from the Quebec company Luna cable, and uh, I'm using their red, Luna Red, right now. So I'm kind of alternating between the two. And they're both really great, slightly different balance of strengths. So there have been a few changes in my system. Um, I did go ahead and trade my Shindo Maceto preamplifier in for the new Shindo Mambrisan. And I'm really loving it. And it's probably still breaking in. These things take a while. It's got output transformers. And transformers always take a lot of time to break in. But I'm digging it and uh, still using a Shindo Hobrion amplifier. That's 20 watts per channel, uh, push-pull 6L6, used as pure pentodes. Uh, there is DC on the screen grids. Uh, it's not an ultralinear and it's not used as a triode. And uh, great, impactful, but with a lot of texture and a lot of color. I really love that amplifier. Um, but I'm doing something new now. Uh, the power, the AC power in Albany, it's a little bit dirtier than the power was in Cherry Valley. Probably because in Cherry Valley, we didn't have that many neighbors. We didn't have many neighbors who weren't cattle. Uh, in Albany, there are a lot of other residences, a lot of businesses. That means there's a lot going on with the power. A lot of noise is being thrown into it. And uh, I find that we needed to do a little power treatment finally. So right now I'm using a Shindo Mr. T. Uh, the, the T stands for transformer, and uh, it is an isolation transformer, kind of similar to what we had in the name Armageddon power supply for the Linnell P12 turntable. Same principle, just a little bit bigger. Actually, a lot bigger. If you open that up, it's a really cool, huge transformer. Audio nerds like that sort of thing. Uh, still my Garrard 301 turntable, still with an EMT 997 turntable. Right now I'm using a Miyajima Sabotin L phono cartridge. Uh, the Sabotin L, the L stands for low compliance, so it requires a little more downforce, and I like that. It's perverse, but I like that. And as you can see, I've been to Ikea, um, because that's an Ikea lamp. I think that was maybe $15, and I love that lamp. And it goes, uh, the green complements the green of the Shindo, and everyone's happy. So before I put on this next selection, I should point out that I'll be recording it with the Sennheiser Ambio, or Ambeo for you Continentals, uh, stereo in-ear microphone system. So you want to wear headphones for best results. Uh, this will be a binaural recording. Speakers will do, but headphones are better. Now I'm going to listen to a selection from Tight Lines. Uh, which was produced by stereophile editor John Atkinson, and it's an album of compositions by my friend and former neighbor Sasha Matson. And uh, it was inspired mostly by his experiences uh, fly fishing with his sons in the Catskills. Sasha and I are not only friends, but we're, and listening friends, but we're fishing friends. So we're going to listen to uh, the fourth of four selections that comprise the Tight Line Suite and that one is titled Run to the Sea.
Well, I wanted to listen to a selection by my friend David Greer, the, the great flat picker, and uh, I don't have any of his stuff on vinyl. I don't think it's available on that format. So uh, I got my CD player into the act, and that is my Sony SCD777ES. It's an SACD and CD player. Uh, it was invented in the Stone Age, and I've had it for about that long, uh, from the 90s or 99, right around there. It's uh, still doing well. So I'm going to listen to a selection from the album Live at the Linda, which David Greer recorded right here in Albany, New York, at the Linda Norris Auditorium. And it's a little beat up because I listen to this in the car a lot, so a few scratches on this one. Uh, we're going to listen to a selection called As It Rolls to the Sea. And uh, we're going to listen to it first, this live version, and then we're going to listen to a studio version he recorded sometime later. This is from 2007, so this is David Greer, As It Rolls to the Sea. <laughs> So that was As It Rolls to the Sea by the flat-picking guitarist David Greer. That was the live version recorded on solo guitar. That was just him flat-picking. Um, the songs in the key of E, he plays it out of C position for you guitar players. Capoed up to the fourth fret, so uh, try that. Now we're going to listen to the same number, but the studio version, which he recorded in 2009 for his CD Evocative. And this one features... Uh, the great young banjo player Noam Pekelny. I think he's from Boston uh, on banjo on this number. And Victor Wooten, uh, uh, an electric bass player whose name is familiar to a lot of uh, audio enthusiasts. And uh, here's the studio version of As It Rolls to the Sea. <laughs> Okay, so 
That wraps up another dynamic listening video. And I'm taking the Sennheiser MBOs out of my ears. I'm not really a headphone fan and certainly not an in-ear headphone fan, so I'm kind of glad to be done with them. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed visiting me here in my new house in Albany, New York, and thanks for listening along with me. Herb, by the power invested in me, mm -hmm. I hereby give you this dog, Forever my dog. to be together. Oh! Well, <laughs> there's, there's your blooper reel for you. Chatty, you didn't mean that, did you? I want to give him kisses, but I don't kisses? want to. Kisses? 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 Good girl, good girl. Kiss, kisses for Herb. Kisses for Herb. <laughs> good girl. Kisses are always good. Yeah, we all like that. We all like that. That's a good girl. Aren't mm -hmm. you sorry you snarled? Not terribly, are you? All right. Time for dog food. <laughs>